Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here and today I want to do another tutorial on how to build an ISO tank container. So first of all, what is an ISO tank container? Well, it's a liquid cargo tank built of stainless steel but the same size as a normal cargo container so when it's on a container ship or in a container port it can be stacked with all the other containers. So in my city, Brick Nottingham, the standardised size is 6 by 10 studs with this height of 5 bricks on the side, uh, 2 plates at the bottom and 1 plate at the top. So this is exactly the same size as one of my containers but obviously the middle is a large tank which would contain a liquid product and that tank actually fits very snugly both against these end pieces in that cross uh, section and it even extends into this gap and this gap beneath. So let's look at how to build it. Now you need quite a lot of pieces for the tank but a lot of them are buried inside it so it doesn't matter what colour they are or what condition the bricks are. So as you'll see here I've used a lot of odd colours that I had left over from sets that I don't need anymore um, just to utilise them because they won't be seen. So the very core of the tank itself uses one new piece which is a modified brick with two studs on the side and they're adjacent sides so it's the corner version of that brick. We need eight of those. They're relatively recent as I say. And if you mount four of them on top of a 2 by 2 round brick of any colour then you'll get a setup like that twice and we just need one more round brick to get the spacing right and then that end on end you could hold them together with a Technic axle if you wanted but it's not necessary. That's the very core of the tank itself because we need to build out in four directions simultaneously. Now the next stage is to make four sides of the tank. Now you can use any coloured 2x6 brick. You can see I've got green and yellow and white here. And on those you'll need two 2x4 two curved slopes, one there and one there, and then you'll need two 2x2 two two curved slopes. Now because these are recessed slightly you'll also need a 2x2 two two plate to attach them firmly as a extra step on the end there, but you'll end up with a 6x4 sort of curved slope going both ways and we'll have one, two, three, four of those Now in addition to that, we need four white 1x6 tiles with a headlight piece, angular brick they're also called, on each end. Now again, you won't see these bricks. So I've got yellow ones, nasty sun damaged faded white ones, grey ones, all sorts. And the thing to do with those is to get two of your sides and mount the angular bricks alongside the 2x6 bricks, both on the top and on the bottom. So if you were to take the tile off it would look like that. So I've got one of those, get another one. Now we will be able to see the 1x6 tiles so they do need to be the same colour as your curved slopes. Right. So now we're ready to build the tank itself. So if we get each of the 1x6 bricks and actually put it onto both of the modified bricks and then just go around adding the next one, the next one and then the last one. Now I've got stickers on this so I'm going to, have to make sure it's the right way around but if you're going to add stickers I'd suggest doing that at the end. So there you can see we've got the core 
holding on to before two by six bricks and those angular bricks just fill in that very slim gap that would otherwise be between each of the sections of curved slopes. Now you can see that's quite round already and I think that's about as round as you can get without using cylinder pieces. And the most important thing is that we've got studs on each of these two ends. And they're going to take two turntable pieces. And again, it doesn't matter what color these are. So I had two blue ones left over. I always seem to run out of black ones. They seem to be the most useful. And you need that in order to be able to vary the angle of these end pieces. And also it needs to stick out a bit because they'll be attached that way and they're recessed. So now you've got room to use four. So you could do them in two pairs like this and like this. And therefore have these the same two colors or different colors or anything you want. But because I'm doing an octan tank, I want to have the usual octan coloring, which is white, red, green. So I'm going to put three on one end and only one on the other. So it looks like that. And this green one has to be bright green, not the normal green, which is called dark green, because uh, there isn't one in, in the darker green. And that just gives us our nice rounded ends for our tank. And I've got an additional sticker just on there for, for interest. And I think that looks very authentic if you look at a, at a real one. Now let's do the frame. So the frame is very simple. Got a one by six plate with a one by two plate in the middle, just to create the flat surface there for the end. And then two, two by 10 plates and then the same on the other end. And then we need to have these two one by six by five lattice walls because this cross member here is actually going to go in the end of the tank in there in that cross there and actually give it the support it needs because otherwise it might just fall out of the side. And I prefer to have it with these open sides facing outwards just because usually they're hidden and it also makes it look a bit more industrial I think. Then we've got two one by two grill pieces on the top, also in dark bluish gray. And then I won't put it on yet, but we've got two more two by 10 pieces, a two by four uh, plate as well. And then one of the two by two round plate with eye, just so the uh, crane can lift this up easily. So that obviously will go on there, giving it strength top and bottom. But first of all, we need to introduce the tank. And it's a bit of a squeeze, so you'll see I have to bend these out, but better that than it rattling around. And you can see on the end, I get all four of those studs pressed onto this cross member here, so it's actually held in position. And then I'll have to make sure it's the right way up for the tank, and then firmly held on that side, push it all down. And already, this tank is not going anywhere. Or just to be doubly sure, We'll put on the top firmly and that is firmly fixed. So I hope you found building an ISO container tank useful and I hope you have the pieces already or not too many pieces required to build your own. I think we need to go and put this on a crane being held up in the air for all to see in my Lego Harbour. And here is our ISO tank container in pride of place on the red crane being loaded onto the City Lines container ship. There's a guy on the deck beckoning it down, waving to the guy controlling the crane and it's just come off that blue truck on the pier. And I think with the stickers, the octan and the danger with the skull and crossbones in Lego minifigure head, 
it looks really, really special. It also gives a lot of variety to the containers that are already there and that it's the only one that's got a tank in that's quite different. It's very realistic because obviously those things exist in real life as well. So all round good show, I think. So as always, thank you very much for watching. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, I'll be looking at motorising my Coast Guard helicopter. See you next time!